Hello and welcome back to the Heartland Signal podcast. I am Nikos Michaels, the social media specialist for Heartland Signal. On today's show, we will be covering the possible government shutdown. Also, later in the show, we will talk about a staunch Holocaust denier from Minnesota who said that the Nazis were actually trying to save Jewish people by locking them up in concentration camps. And you'll never guess what he's doing. He's running for a local school board. Before we get into all that, please, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that notification bell to keep up with all the latest clips posted on Heartland Signal. And if you are a Spotify person, look us up on Spotify at Heartland Signal. Today, we are joined by Austin Lafonte and Richard Herbwine. Let's dive right into the government shutdown nonsense. Yeah, so the government's likely shutting down on Sunday. It's the start of the new fiscal year. They need to put out a new budget. Uh, there's about seven Republicans led by Matt Gates that are holding it up. Uh, and they're, re- they're realizing Oh, well, then we're not going to pass something because they want more solid things. They want to divert uh, Ukraine funds to the border, uh, among other things. So uh, it was like, oh, we'll just do a continuing our resolution. Uh, they're not even going to do the continuing resolution. There's no stopgap. It is all or nothing for these seven. And w- what that means is when, sh- when the government shuts down, uh, you're gonna see all these uh, federal workers are g- not going to be working without pay or just not working at all. That includes military, that includes congressional workers, not the Congress people themselves, but like their like staff is going to be not going to get paid. And probably the worst thing, and this happened the last time the government shut down in 2019, uh, aircraft traffic controllers are not going to get paid or they won't also get trained. So if you thought that like, uh, if you thought that flying recently was bad already, it's going to get way worse. So... Basically, McCarthy's trying to really trying to push for a stopgap. He, he's like, oh, uh, th- he's got his coalition, and he's been embarrassed on the floor already twice with procedural votes. So we kind of already know that the government's going to be shutting down uh, here. In fact, I think Matt Gates told the New York Times that he wants the he wants like a mini shutdown, quote unquote, which is like six to eight days, which is like the government shuts down but not enough for a paycheck. Which that'll show him. Yeah, yeah, he wants to stop the fever, quote unquote. <laughs> which, Give him a little break. Yeah, just a little break. Just a little, a little break. Just a little, little break from the payment. <laughs> yeah, just a little break from the government. Just six, eight days where the dollar doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I mean, so the other things that would uh, that this would affect is national parks would be shut down, student loan applications would be affected, um, federal like health and safety inspections. Um, obviously, federal law enforcement officers would not be paid. They would either uh, have to show up to work without pay or be furloughed, right? And just the bottom line is this costs the government a lot of time and money, and it's extremely unnecessary. The last government shutdown was in 2018, right? And it lasted 35 days and cost the government $3 billion, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So, very clearly, this is a this would be a big freaking I mean, this, deal. <laughs> this is like this is Republicans 101 though. They they would love to a not pay people and b like to take time off. So like this is right up their alley. <laughs> yeah, and it was even great because like you have this huge thing coming up and it's like, "Oh, okay, McCarthy's going to like keep people over over time to work on this." No, he just sent everyone home on Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. right. Four-day work week people just and said, was, oh, "He's not serious." <laughs> there was a bunch of representatives that were like, oh, "I thought we were why is, I, they like unscheduled a bunch of their events for the weekend because I thought they were going to be working this weekend yeah. just to be surprised of like, "Uh, actually just just leave. We don't we don't want you here." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> which I guess he wants to scuttle Matt Gates for like to not get more people on his side, but still, like you're also not like you're gonna lose regardless. <laughs> yeah, I think the just complete lack of urgency is compounded by the fact that even if the bill that the Republicans want, not the far right Republicans, the bill that the regular Republican, the one that got voted down because of the far right ones would still not get it past the Democrats in the Senate or past Joe Biden in the presidency. So it just shows you how far apart they are and how far away from an actual appropriations bill we are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I guess the far right Republicans want to either uh, a uh, kind of stick it to Biden, make him taking up for sort of things or B 
uh, which is probably more the case, they want to they want to take out McCarthy because mm-hmm. they've pledged if they do stopgap revolution, they're going to put out a vote for McCarthy. And say, I only need one person to do it. And we know what happened last time. It took 15 rounds right. to confirm it. It's probably not going to, might even be messier the it's next time around. Very much up in the air if he has the votes to stay in his position if that kind of vote gets to the House floor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's... There's a lot going on. And among the other things that the Republicans want to do is undo a lot of the Biden administration's climate initiatives, mm-hmm. billions of dollars worth. Um, they want to resume border wall construction, which is, you know, just a vanity project of Trump's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, they so they do that in the name of border security, right? But meanwhile, they would be cutting the spending for like national security agencies, which would which have a better chance of stopping illegal immigrants from cro- crossing no. the border. <laughs> so the hypocrisy is running rampant here. I mean, I find it really funny. You have you now obviously the far right Republicans saying, "Oh, we don't like McCarthy," and they obviously did this. They made their points abundantly clear when they were voting McCarthy in as the speaker. Now, like, how do you think those conversations go? Like, if they're trying to talk, are they? Is there any actual talking going on between two? Like, say, Matt Gates. Matt Gates is the leader of the far, far right, right? Mm-hmm. Is there any conversations actually happening between two of them, or is it just like a, no, I don't like you, no, I don't like you? No, they just take turns like grabbing each other by the collars and like, <laughs> listen here, bub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you listen here, bub. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to picture them having a serious talk about this stuff. <laughs> seriously. But. I mean, hey, if they can't take the government seriously, who can? But <laughs> we will see if House Republicans can get along and prevent the government shutdown, or if they will be denied before the September 30th deadline. Speaking of deniers, insurance broker and author of The Big Lie, The Holocaust, Von Klingenberg, is running for a school board seat in Minnesota, where if he wins, not only can he tell you about insurance, but his wild views on how Jews wanted the Holocaust and not the Nazis. But one more time, <laughs> make sure you are subscribed to the page and check out our website, heartlandsignal.com, so you don't miss out on stories like this and much more. Rich, take it away. Yeah, so we got our buddy Von Klingenberg up in Minnesota. He is running for school board in Roseville, which is a suburb of Minneapolis. And last, or I think it was in July, he made an appearance on the VT radio podcast where he um, had an extensive conversation on his views of the Holocaust and the Jewish religion, and it was a doozy, to say the least. Um, Among things, he said that Nazis did not want to kill Jews during the Holocaust, but to save them from other Jews. These are obviously outlandish and uncorroborated conspiracy theories. We do not support these at all. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, easily debunked by hearing Hitler talk once. Yeah, if you know anything about history or World War II, any any of the stuff that he was saying, you would immediately label as outlandish and untrue. But he doubles down and has written books about this. This is like his what he does other than his insurance Some brand, people garden, brokerage. some yeah. people like collect stamps. This guy writes writes books. and sells books about Holocaust denial on his, his cam- website. This campaign's so interesting because like we checked we checked them as a like uh board of elections. He's running. Yes. He, he's like uh, file the paperwork to run, he's mm-hmm. running. If you Google Von Kilmer right now, you don't see anything except all of his books and all of it, mm-hmm. all of his like Holocaust denial stuff. Yes, he's doing this. He's trying to sell his books. Yeah, that's what he's yeah. doing this for. Um, so yeah, the other stuff that you're saying is there's not a single shred of evidence that Jews were killed in concentration camps. No. Well, apparently a bunch of like thousands of eyewitness reports. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, or the survivors. Who yeah. Were there. This, yeah. So he says the six million deaths is more like 300,000 and they were not murdered. They were uh, they died of a famine in Germany and from typhus. So, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's outlandish. It's ridiculous. Um, so this guy is running for school board, right? Where if he wins, he would be one of six people in this district that would oversee education policy ideas for preschool through high schoolers. 
So that's the type of guy who... <laughs> Do, that's the question here. Is like you want this type of guy overseeing that kind of position? It's it's insane. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of in this same vein of like far right Republicanism, where it's like they're focusing on things like banning books, just on ideas they don't agree with and things like that. So it's sort of in that same vein. Yeah, and that's where the far right is kind of aiming, have their sights on right now. Beforehand, it used to be like the election boards, and now they want school boards. Mm -hmm. So you have all these Mom for Liberty type groups kind of endorsing these candidates, pushing out these candidates, trying to get them to say like, hey, well, we're going to go, we're going to take over these school boards because every school board in the country is apparently uh, indoctrinating kids uh, with certain junk. <laughs> and right. uh, Quote-unquote junk. Yeah, <laughs> quote-unquote junk. Uh, and just k kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like not to say like the obvious here, but it's like how disgusting can you be as an individual to like you're – you write these books, you are doing these, like saying these terrible things, mm -hmm. and then your next idea is like, it's time to teach the kids yeah. about yeah. these things. You know, like how, I mean, honestly, it, it's it's terrible. I mean, and yeah. we're not, maybe it's because we're hearing it more and more that you're seeing these views pop up now. And unfortunately, like, they're feeling emboldened because, like, you're seeing people who from that era die off and they're like, we can just say whatever we want now. Mm -hmm. And I've seen like a like a rise in these type of these people coming out and feeling they can say anything. I was thinking about that. It's like the amount of people who were actually around at the time are diminishing, right? There's, so right. there's not a lot of people who are actually eyewitnesses there that can just be like, I was there. <laughs> you are lying blatantly. Yeah. It's the same the same strategy that Trump Trump uses, right? He just floods the the entire atmosphere with as much BS and nonsense as possible, right? That way you don't know what is true, right? That's like the that's the like strategy that a guy like this is using, right? And where and then he just goes and turns around and says, "I'm actually on the Jew side. I'm a Holocaust truther." He said that in the podcast. <laughs> so it's just it's insane. And if you live in Roseville, Minnesota, you should be aware that this this guy is running to oversee education policy for children. So I kind of want to see him to be like a sixth grader. Uh -huh. I kind of want to see him like debate a sixth grader learning about this for the first time. Yeah, because I feel like a sixth grader learning about the Holocaust for the first time and doing like a like a essay on it, like mm -hmm. a three paragraph essay, could probably do better than him. Just pick it apart, yeah. Yeah, Just poke holes right through all this stuff that he says. I mean, this this is the definition of why local elections are like so important. Why mm -hmm. people should be paying attention to these things because literally, a guy who is saying these terrible things could possibly be voted in <laughs> on your school board, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. not to turn it into a completely different thing, but it's like. When you see people like Taylor Swift getting like 30,000 people to register the vote, it's like, it's important. Voting does matter. Yeah, like it's absolutely important. So idiots like this who write in their free time uh, the big lie, the Holocaust, <laughs> can't yeah. be on your school board. Yes. Um, do you guys have any uh, any other things to add into this? I do not. Um Voting matters, people. That, that's my big takeaway from this. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you're keeping aware of who's running in your local elections. Seriously, yeah. seriously. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this has been another episode of the Heartland Signal podcast. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this page, and follow us on Spotify. We will see you next time.